So today we're going to be revisiting a topic that we started to look at in a previous grade, but we're going to be doing things a little bit differently with this topic. We're looking at los colores, but today we're going to be describing different items around us in Espanol, in Spanish. So I want to find out firstly though, what is your favorite color? Now can anybody guess my favorite color? I know some of you already know my favorite color. And C, my favorite color is purple. So you're going to also be able to ask persons what their favorite colors are in Spanish and they're going to be able to tell you and you are going to also be able to say what your favorite color is in Spanish. So some of the colors that we know are black, pink, green, purple, blue, red, yellow, white, brown, red. And I'm sure there are other colors, but these are the colors that we're going to be looking at today. Now, in Spanish, these colors are verde for green, morado, purple, azul, blue, rojo, red, amarillo, yellow, blanco, white, café, brown, or you can say marrón, brown. This one is rojo, red, negro, black, y la última, rosado, which is pink. Now, we're going to be singing a song that I taught you some time ago. I hope you remember it about los colores. And it goes like this. Los colores, los colores. Muchas, muchas colores. Los colores, los colores. Muchas, muchas colores. Rojo is red. Café is brown. Blanco is white. Colors, colors, colors. Los colores, los colores. Muchas, muchas colores. Los colores, los colores. Muchas, muchas colores. Amarillo is yellow. Anaranjado is orange. Azul is blue. Colors, colors, colors. Los colores, los colores. Muchas, muchas colores. Los colores, los colores. Muchas, muchas colores. Morado is purple. Verde is green. Negro is black. Rosado is pink. Colors, colors, colors. Muy bien. So, negro is black. Just refresh your memories. Negro is black. Negro is black. Rosado is pink. Rosado is pink. Anaranjado is orange. Anaranjado is orange. Amarillo is yellow. Amarillo, yellow. Blanco, white. Blanco, white. Café, brown. Café, brown. Rojo, red. Rojo, red. Verde, green. Verde, green. Morado, purple. Morado, purple. And azul, blue. Azul, blue. Bueno? So, we're going to go through them a bit slower, and I want you to say after me. Repita después, por favor. Repeat after me, please. Vamos. Rosado, pink. Rosado, pink. Negro, black. Negro, black. Verde, green. Verde, green. Rojo, red. Rojo, red. Café, brown. Café, brown. Morado, purple. Morado, purple. Blanco, white. Blanco, white. Azul, blue. Azul, blue. Amarillo, yellow. Amarillo, yellow. Anaranjado, orange. Anaranjado, orange. Now, we 
we oh, yeah. actually should already by now know how to ask and see what our favorite color is because I think we touched on that sometime before. So you would ask, ¿Cuál es tu color favorito? What is your favorite color? The question is, ¿Cuál es tu color favorito? What is your favorite color? And you'd answer by saying, Mi color favorito es, and you name, the, name your favorite color in Spanish. So, por ejemplo, for example, my favorite color, the best color in the world, is purple. I would say, Mi color favorito es morado. My favorite color is purple. If your favorite color is blue, you would say, Mi color favorito es azul. My favorite color is blue. If your favorite color is pink, mi color favorito es rosado. My favorite color is pink. If your favorite color is yellow, mi color favorito es amarillo. Me, señorita, señorita, me. Okay, okay, Raúl, okay. Let's find out what Raúl's favorite color is. I wonder who can guess what it is. Raúl, ¿cuál es tu color favorito? Mi color favorito es Anaranjado. Can anybody guess what color Raul's favorite color? What what color Raul's favorite color is? If your answer was orange, see, sí, es correcto because he is also orange. So he said, mi color favorito es anaranjado. My favorite color is orange. His favorite color is orange. Now we're describing different items today by using. Colors and colors, as you know, are adjectives. So when we're describing using adjectives, we know that there are certain rules we have to follow. So we did different adjectives before: alto, alta, bonita, guapo, delgado, and many other adjectives in Spanish. But today we're going to be using more colors. Now let's see if we can remember the rules that were taught to you before that you should use when you're describing in Spanish. Now. The first thing we need to identify, is this noun singular, is this noun plural, is this noun masculine, or is this noun a feminine noun? So, if it is a singular noun, this means that it doesn't have the letter S at the end. So, singular nouns don't normally have S at the end of the word. Once they're plural now, that's when we normally add S or ES, depending on what the word ends in. So remember for the nouns that end with vowels, they would have S. Those that end in um, consonants, you would add ES to make them plural. But today we're focusing on singular nouns, all right? So we won't have to worry about that right now. We're looking at singular nouns and we're describing them using colors in Spanish. So let's see. We already know that they're singular. Now we also need to find out is this noun a masculine noun or is it a feminine noun? Hmm, how do I tell which one is masculine and feminine? I don't remember, no recuerdo. Well, what you need to remember is this. Feminine nouns usually end with the letter A. So most feminine nouns end with the letter A. It's very, very rare that you find a feminine noun that doesn't end with the letter A. Now, masculine nouns, on the other hand, they don't end with A. Most of the time, they don't end with A. It's very rare that you might find one or two little words that end with A that are masculine nouns. For example, un sofa, right? We did that in grade two, um, things in the house. Um, but um, for nouns that end with O, sometimes other letters, but not normally the letter A, those are our masculine nouns. And we also said that you can identify masculine nouns by the or feminine nouns by the articles that I use in front of it. Remember, una and una, which means at or am. Un for masculine nouns, una for feminine nouns. There's also la and el. They mean they. We use la for feminine nouns and el for masculine nouns. Now, we're describing these nouns using colors. And we're going to use items that we've learned before in Spanish. So, let's try with... Last formas. Let's use shapes. That's an easy one to use. Good. So, what if I want to say that this item right here, the oval, is orange. Now, the oval is a masculine noun because it says ovalo. It ends with O. It's a masculine noun, right? So, 
if we want to say that it is orange, the Spanish word for orange is anaranjado. It already ends in O. So do I change this O from anaranjado? We're not going to change it. For masculine nouns, if the color that you are using ends in a vowel, you're going to leave it just as it is. And guess what? For all the other colors as you know them, you're going to leave them as is. So verde, morado, azul, blanco, rojo, café, amarillo. Uh, which other one was there? An aranjado, morado. Once you're describing a masculine noun, you leave those colors as is. Once it's a masculine noun and singular, you don't have to change anything. So for the shapes, if you don't remember what they are, un ovalo is an oval, un cuadrado, a square, un rectangulo, a rectangle, un rombo, a diamond, un corazón, a heart, un triangulo, a triangle, un círculo, a circle, and una estrella, a star. Good. Now, the only noun that we have here that's a feminine noun is una estrella. Now, what happens is this. If we are describing a feminine noun in Spanish, now the color that we're using, for example, if the color is yellow, if the color ends in a vowel, if it's O, we have to change that O to the letter A. So we have to have the agreement between the, um, the noun and the adjective. So amarillo becomes amarilla because it's describing a feminine noun. La estrella is a feminine noun. So amarillo becomes amarilla. Yeah, what if I was describing a book? A book is, well, a notebook is un cuaderno. If I want to say that it is black, it's going to remain negro. I'm not going to change it to negra because it's a masculine noun, okay? But what if I was describing a ruler? Una regla. And say, for instance, this was pink. I wouldn't say rosado because it's a feminine noun. Regla is a feminine noun. I would say rosada. What if I'm describing an eraser, a pencil eraser? This is una goma. It's white, and white in Spanish is blanco. But because we're describing a feminine noun, it changes from blanco to blanca. So when the color ends with O, if we're talking about a singular feminine noun, we're going to change the O to the letter A. We change the O to A if we're talking about a singular feminine noun now we know that there are colors such as verde cafe or marron there's also azul these colors they don't end with a vowel they don't end with o so we can't change them so what happens is whether you're talking about a feminine noun or a masculine noun those remain the same so you won't have to worry about that the only time there there comes a change with those words is if we're talking about plural nouns if we're describing more than one then you'll see s or es depending on the word but for singular nouns azul verde cafe marron they remain the same okay so if i want to describe this circle right here it is white and i want to say that it is white i'm going to say that the circle which is a masculine noun is blanco masculine good Triangulo. Triangulo is the Spanish word for triangle. And the color that we have here is brown. So the Spanish word for brown is café. Now, do we add an O to café to make it café yo? Hmm. Does that sound right? I don't think so. So remember, café remains the same whether you're talking about a masculine noun or a feminine noun in its singular state. The next one is corazón. And the corazón is red. The heart is red. Now, un corazón is a masculine noun. It doesn't end with A. So, are we going to say roja or rojo for corazón? Un corazón would be rojo. It's a masculine noun. Now, let's go to cuadrado. Cuadrado is a square and it's a masculine noun. The color of the square is azul, which is blue. Now, because it's a masculine noun, are we going to change it to azulo? No, it remains azul. If the star was blue, and the star in Spanish estrella is a feminine noun, would we say azula? If the star was blue? No. Once it's azul, verde, café, or marron, we leave it just the same. Once it's a singular noun. All right? Next is 
un rectángulo. And un rectángulo here is purple. Purple in Spanish is morado. Now, since it's a masculine noun, we're not going to change it. It remains morado. And then we have our diamond here, un rombo, and it is green. Now, because it's a masculine noun, are we going to say verdeo? No, no, no. It remains verde. Verde, café, marón, and azul remain the same if you're describing a singular noun. The only time you're going to change the end of the spelling of a noun is if you are describing a feminine noun. And the only time you change now, the only ones you change or no colors that in, um, incur spell change would be those colors that end with O. You change the O to A if you're describing a feminine noun. So una goma, una regla, una estrella, una pizarra, chalkboard, mm -hmm. una tiza. Those nouns, once you're describing them in Spanish, if the color that you're using usually ends with an O, you have to change the O to E to allow the adjective to agree with the noun, all right? Good. So, we're asking the question today, de que color es? Followed by an item. So, for example, de que color es la goma? What color is the eraser? De que color es la goma? What color is the eraser? Now, since it's white, I would say, la goma es blanca. La goma is a feminine noun, so it becomes blanca. We change the O from blanco to blanca, change it to E. So we say, la goma es blanca. De que color es la tiza? What color is the chalk? Now, since it's green, we're going to say, la tiza es Verde. La tiza es verde. We don't add an A to verde. It remains the same for singular nouns. De que color es la regla? It's also green. So we say la regla es verde. The ruler is green. De que color es el libro? What color is this textbook? Now, since it's red, we would say... El libro es rojo. It's a masculine noun. So, el libro es rojo. It's, it keeps the O at the ending. De que color es el lápiz? El lápiz ends with Z. It's a masculine noun. De que color es el lápiz? What color is the pencil? We answer by saying, el lápiz es anaranjado. It's a masculine noun. The pencil is orange. El lápiz es anaranjado. And let's do one more. De que color es el bolígrafo? What color is the pen? The pen is blue. We would say el bolígrafo es azul. El bolígrafo es azul. So remember your colors. We have rojo, red, café, brown, blanco, white, amarillo, yellow, verde, green, morado, purple, azul, blue, anaranjado, orange, negro, black, rosado, pink. And if we're asking what color something is in Spanish, we ask, de que color es, followed by the name of the item. And then to answer that question, we start with the name of the item. For example, la tiza, the chalk, we say, la tiza es, the chalk is followed by the color that the chalk has. And you also have to remember the agreement of nouns and adjectives in Spanish. For singular nouns, no, we're not doing any mass, um, plural nouns today. For the singular nouns, once you're describing a feminine noun, the colors that usually end with O, we're going to change the O's to A. And for the other colors like azul, verde, café, we leave them as is. Masculine nouns, the colors as we know them, we use them just the same. Rojo, amarillo, blanco, they already end with O, so we don't need to change them, all right? So you have to remember that. Now, I hope everybody learned something today. You're able to share your favorite color in Spanish, and you're able to describe different items that you know using colors in Spanish. Remember your agreement of nouns and adjectives, okay?
Now what you'll do for me is to get your workbooks and you're going to be completing the activity on page 11 and also the activity on page 12 there. So get your crayons, you have some coloring to do. You're going to be matching colors to their Spanish names and you're going to be coloring a picture by with the colors that are indicated but the colors are written in Spanish. So you have to pay very close attention, all right? So that's it for today and I hope everybody enjoyed our lesson and we all learned a lot. So from our Raul and I, we say, Adios, 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 means goodbye. Adios, estudiantes. Adios, students. Bye.